introducing the best speaker, Marco Calda, who did his undergrad uh, at the University of uh, Trento in Italy. And currently he is a PhD in Coimbra, in the, the University of Coimbra, uh, working with uh, João Rosa. Thank you. And go for it. Thank you. Thank you all for being here. Uh, thank you, Alex, for all the work you did. Uh, I'm working in, at the Coimbra University now as a PhD student, and today I'm going to talk uh, about primordial glycol as a laboratory for physics beyond the standard scenarios. And uh, as a starting point, let me answer the question you will have in mind, I guess. What is beyond? Beyond what? So beyond the uh, standard model of particle physics, in the sense that I would like to provide a new way to probe the total number of axion like particles with a mass smaller than few mega electron volt, and this through the spin distribution of primordial black holes that are today operating. Then I will be interested in uh, the detection of such objects uh, and the estimation of their mass and angular momentum throughout uh, the, uh, the spectrum of uh, photon which they emit. Uh, then, beyond what? Beyond general relativity vacuum solution. Uh, so uh, the idea is to probe the beyond the horizon structure throughout the dynamics of such an object in the sense of tracking the mass evolution, the temperature evolution, and the spin evolution of this black hole throughout time. So a key ingredient of, of is it possible to see? I can put it on. No. I think it's good, yeah, good idea. A key ingredient for this uh, uh, project uh, is uh, uh, the string axiverse. Uh, and so uh, axions, uh, to the extent of this work, axions are just a scalar field which enjoy a shift symmetry in the four dimension. They have no mass coming from uh, the perturbative effect. Their only mass is coming from non-perturbative effects. So this mass uh, is really small and they emerge as a plethora of field from uh, string compatibility and uh, they come uh, about uh, because of the uh, topological different way which is possible to compactify the six extra dimensions required in, in string theory. And here are some examples. If we consider, for example, just a two, um, a two form, it is possible to have many different uh, uh, ways to compactify. And since we have six uh, in string theory, plus many ways to compactify them, the number of these particles can be uh, very, very high, spanning from hundreds to thousands and thousands. If you want, uh, if you have question about this kind of particle, I have some back slide about just this topic. But let's move to the next uh, uh, ingredient of this recipe, which are black hole. To our extent, black hole are just a classical solution of general relativity, uh, which have uh, a mass and a spin, not uh, a charge, because the charge uh, is uh, well reported in literature to, to be uh, washed out uh, way before the total evaporation of the black hole, uh, the, well before the, uh, the lifetime of the black hole, uh, the time at which is depleted is fast. That's the big answer. And so they're basically just rotating black hole described by the Kerr solution. Uh, we are interested in primordial black holes uh, because uh, uh, they have a mass uh, which can be down up to 10 to the 12 kilogram. And this allows them to evaporate uh, in the presence of many scalars in a way that shows changes of the spin parameter of the black hole. This kind of black hole are thought to be formed in the early universe throughout the direct collapse of over density in the cosmic plasma. And their mass can be uh, very, very small or very, very high depending on the time at which they form. And uh, we consider uh, two ansatz for the spin of such object. Uh, a donata spin that can be even either at the percentage level or at the nearly extremal uh, value. This depending on whether they form in the radiation dominated era or in the early matter dominated era. I'm sure you all know what is the radiation dominated era, uh, uh, but the early matter dominated era is an era which uh, uh, is uh, required in some scenario, for example, since uh, the, um, the homogeneity, the horizon problem, the flatness problem, it is uh, uh, necessary to invoke uh, an inflaton uh, epoch in which the universe undergoes uh, a rapid uh, acceleration expansion. 
and uh, uh, this uh, uh, inflation is usually driven by a scalar field which is called inflaton which needs to uh, roll down its potential and to uh, allow the universe as we know uh, it is uh, to exist and uh, doing so uh, this field oscillates in a quadratic wall at the end of at the bottom of its potential and this oscillation and the dynamic of this oscillation behave as a pressureless fluid and so matter, and that's the early matter dominated area which sits here. And so, according to the uh, equation of state of the uh, universe at the time of formation, we can have either primordial black hole at the percentage level of their spin parameter or uh, nearly extremal in their spin parameter. So, uh, because uh, in one era, you have one, in the relation dominated era, you don't have a pressureless fluid, so the equation of state is different. While in the radiation dominated era, while well, in the, sorry, uh, early matter dominated era, you have a different equation of state, which caused the collapse not to be spherical, like in, like in the radiation dominated era, but uh, can acquire a uh, spin. And so that's the, the, the take home message is the equation of state is stating whether your black hole will be in one configuration or the other. Uh, so, uh, as you all know, uh, black holes are not static, they evaporate. It is known since uh, the remarkable work of Hawking in 75, which taken into account for the frequencies that make it through and the one that are swallowed by uh, the creation of an event horizon, is able to associate to the surface gravity of the event horizon a temperature and the number density, which has the form of a, a black body radiation. But actually, if one considers the calculation in four dimensions, it takes into account the simplest field, so a massless Klein-Gordon field, and the simplest uh, uh, background metric, so a uh, Schwarzschild metric. What emerged is a gravitational potential that is purely from a geometrical origin, uh, and that this potential acts as a barrier filtering the uh, radiation. Uh, as reported in this uh, sketch cartoon. And so what one has are these coefficients, which are nothing but transmission coefficients, which are called gray body factor, and states the differences between um, the purely uh, black body radiation and the one expected from a black hole. We are certainly not interested in this, uh, this, uh, in this very simple uh, Schwarzschild solution, and not only in the Klein-Gordon field, we are interested in uh, all the different spin field and in rotating black holes. And uh, a remarkable result uh, uh, by Kikowski, which exploited the uh, newman parents formalism, is to condense all these equations into one equation called the Kikowski equation. This is the radial part of this equation. And once uh, this equation is solved uh, at the horizon and at infinity, it is possible to calculate this gray body factor for each spin field. Uh, uh, which one is interested in, and each uh, mode of the field uh, given by the harmonic uh, Ln. And so it is possible to obtain this uh, number density of the emission. And for sure, each uh, field and each mode of the field, once emitted, will take away from the black hole some energy and uh, angular momentum. And it is possible to track the loss of energy and angular momentum uh, of the black hole throughout these two functions called the pleating function. Uh, and given by this formula here. This is a standard procedure well described in uh, page trilogy uh, from the 70s and later on in some uh, paper of Iskov et al. And so using some differential equation, it is possible to track uh, the evolution of spin and mass of the black hole throughout the lifetime of uh, the black hole itself, uh, given the initial condition of the black hole. So, for sure, a black hole is not evaporating just with one field. We are interested in many different fields, a set of fields with which the black hole will evaporate with. And actually, not only one set, but a set which is changing according to the temperature of the black hole. Because while the mass is depleted, the temperature will rise. And with the rise of the temperature, many different degrees of freedom will enter in the uh, evaporation, namely from the lightest and massless to the heavier and heavier and heavier. And, uh, but these degrees of freedom are uh, Boltzmann suppressed uh, if their mass is uh, uh, higher than the temperature of the black hole. So we considered an approximation. We 
consider the massless case, uh, the massless fields for masses smaller than uh, the temperature of the black hole, while in other cases absent uh, from the uh, evaporating sample. This way, it is possible to set up a program which you will fit in with the mass of the black hole, the initial mass, and the initial spin of the black hole, and uh, which will evolve the black hole inserting every uh, new particle, every new degrees of freedom in the evaporating sample and taking into account all the degrees of freedom once want to take into account. In our case, the uh, standard model particles plus the graviton and a, very, uh, a different number of axon-like particles. And this until uh, uh, the moment in which uh, the mass is zero and the black hole is evaporated totally. Clearly that's an approximation and uh, uh, this, uh, this point is uh, highly debatable. Uh, but let's come to some results. Uh, what are you looking at uh, is called a ready plot, uh, and it is uh, the, um, the spin of the black hole against its mass. Actually, it's the spin today and the mass today, and those two plots are obtained taking uh, uh, the mass of uh, a black hole, which had just evaporated now, and increasing it slightly a bit, and see where it ends on this plot and then to, uh, to fit all the, the data ones, the numerical data ones obtained for the different number of uh, uh, axion-like particle. And uh, uh, in the two cases of uh, uh, the percentage level and nearly a stream of natal uh, spin. Uh, as you can see from these two plots, uh, they have the same behavior in the case of uh, uh, no presence of uh, scalar particle in the underlying theory of particle physics, uh, in the sense that uh, for both the cases at 10 to the 11, more or less uh, uh, kilogram of today uh, black hole, their spin should be uh, totally washed out. And uh, so uh, finding just one uh, black hole in this region or this region here, would be a striking signal of the presence of many axon like particle or many scalars in this case, uh, particle in the uh, underlying theory. And uh, sorry, I was trying to understand the plot. So, yeah. So the mass, so, the initial, the initial mass is what? The initial mass uh, is uh, this plot are obtained uh, starting the evolution with the mass uh, barely enough uh, to have the total evolution of the black hole today. So one universe time is the lifetime of the, of the black hole then increasing a bit the mass in order to have a remnant which is bigger and uh, bigger and bigger and going from this direction to this direction of the plot uh, and see what is the today's spin of the black hole and then fit, fit in the numerical bit. Are you thinking any kind of constraint of cosmology in this? Because like all these black holes that we have here to massless particles and full lifetime of the universe, this might be factor. Do you see that the computer is just action by? And then they affect variabilities and they affect CMP. And I highly doubt that you can put 10,000 mass degrees of freedom without violating any kind of technology. We, we didn't take into account this, but the 10,000, it's uh, uh, we push it up to there uh, just to see uh, the asymptotic behavior uh, because. Uh, possibility of having an action like particle uh, coming from certain theory. Well, that depends on what you're assuming from the fact that you're assuming that the particles are elliptic and that they assume that they are thermalized. That, that, that's why I assume that No, we, we are assuming that they are uh, uh, not interacting with the standard model particle, so that they don't contribute to, they don't thermalize, they are just emitted. And we assume that the- So the collection is- the axion-like particle of uh, coming from string theory can 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 have a mass which is unrelated from the from the coupling to the photons, and so in principle it is possible to suppose that they don't interact uh, in this way. 
So it's in this way it's possible to justify this number, I, I guess. In a way, did I answer your question? So wh why is it interesting, this result? Is it interesting because there are, are known at the cosmological and astrophysical level signature of the individual axions, so the, the individual mass range of the axion, but not a probe of the total number of these particles, so not the whole axioms. And to our extent, uh, this uh, uh, spin distribution of primordial black hole, uh, which evaporates uh, in presence of many scalar, is a, a unique probe of the number of scalar fields present in the underlying theory of uh, particle physics. So we thought about mechanisms that should spoil this result. For example, the uh, acquiring a spin from accretion, but likely enough, if we consider uh, primordial black hole of this uh, uh, time life, so these masses, the accretion is irrelevant and if it's present, it's quasi spherical. Uh, while it is possible that they merge and so create a, a bigger black hole, which is which has some a different uh, uh, spin parameter, but this kind of black hole hardly become uh, uh, gravitationally bound, and so they do not form a binary system. And another uh, mechanism that could spoil this result is the production of a, a super radiant particle. In this case, for this mass is pion. Uh, but this case require a nearly extremal black hole, uh, a nearly, I'm sorry, nearly extremal in the spin parameter black hole. Uh, so we got just one of the two plots I showed you before. And actually this kind of instability can last for one giga year, which is uh, less than one ten of the life. So it doesn't affect the overall result in this sense. So let's look at uh, the other way around. So uh, let's uh, consider the uh, flux of axon-like particle coming from a single primordial black hole in the relevant mass range, which is given by this formula. And if we take into account for a reasonable number of axon-like particles motivated by string compatification, this luminosity is totally dominated by the axon-like particle. And these particles are hot with respect to their mass because 10 to the 10 kilogram black hole is uh, around uh, the temperature is around one giga electron volt, and these particles uh, are known to be very, very uh, light. In our case, we consider smaller than few electron volt, than a few mega electron volt. Sorry, they are dark to the standard model. They are not redshifted because these black holes are evaporating today, and for this reason, the CMB and the uh, Big Bang nucleosynthesis constraint do not apply, and their density can be uh, as high as uh, one desire. And so let's imagine to have a detection of an axion, very energetic axion here on the earth. For sure, it's a remarkable result because uh, you're measuring one axion, but uh, also can be considered as a, a signal of the presence of a black hole, which is evaporating nearby, which is emitting and is the source of this very, very hot axion. So uh, I would like to talk a bit about the detectability of this object. Uh, it is possible once the gray body factor are known to calculate the, uh, the emissivity in uh, the flux of uh, the, the emissivity of uh, photons with this formula and uh, calculate for different masses and different spin of the black hole. And as you can see from this plot, uh, the peak position is highly dependent on the mass, but not uh, on the uh, spin parameter, while the height depends on the spin parameter. And so it is possible uh, given. Uh, an observe, um, a measurement of the distance of this uh, object to have uh, an estimation of their uh, mass and uh, spin. But this is uh, uh, putting another layer on the table, another uh, source of, uh, um, of error. So we would like to go beyond this uh, easy uh, way to detect the mass and the spin. Um, so just a couple of words about the, um, the experimental detectability. Uh, for sure, the black hole is not emitting just this uh, primary emission of photon, is emitting an, also a secondary uh, component, which results from the fragmentation, the, um, the final state radiation and all the processes undergoing uh, the uh, unstable <laughs> particles. And this result in a secondary part of the uh, spectrum. And uh, this plot is taken by a Gibbon article. And uh, a Fermilat uh, um, 
affirm that it is possible to spot a 10 to the 10 kilogram primordial black hole in its total spectrum up to 200 astronomical units. So we wanted to have an estimation of the average distance of this kind of object, uh, given their fraction of uh, 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 dark matter density. And this fraction, uh, uh, we have an upper bound for this, which is 10, one part in 10 to the seven. And uh, uh, if one considers a 10 to the 10 kilogram black hole, uh, this means that, and a saturated value of this fraction, one has uh, uh, that aver on average, uh, one, one of these uh, primordial black holes should be in uh, 40 astronomical units, which is a distance comparable with the one of the solar system. Uh, different uh, uh, observatories are uh, planned in order uh, um, in the right range of energies. And for sure, if this uh, parameter is not saturated, uh, it will require uh, more accuracy in order to determine the spin and the mass of this object. But in principle, it's something that should be upcoming. So all I said up to now is in this paper on the, on the archive. Now I would like to move to another topic. Why we want to use the secondary part of the photon uh, emission? Because it adds more feature to the spectrum, helping to uh, assess the, the, uh, the, the spin and the mass of the black hole in a, a distance independent method. And also our first idea was, well, it's uh, uh, more intense, this part of the mission. So higher intensity, easier to spot, but uh, this is a no-go zone because this part of the spectrum uh, is uh, highly degenerate in uh, both the, uh, the quantity we want to measure. So we have to use other, uh, other uh, features of the spectrum, which are in this part here. So, what is the parameter space? We are interested, as we said, in light primordial black hole in this mass range and having a spin which goes from zero to half the, uh, the maximum one. This uh, means that the temperature goes from 10 mega electron volt to 200 electron volt. And actually the temperature doesn't depend heavily on the, uh, on the spin of the black hole. So why is a good range? Is a good range because uh, this range allows to have uh, uh, a secondary component always because the electron undergoes the final state radiation and contributes uh, to the uh, to the secondary uh, part of the uh, the mission. Uh, while on the other side uh, we are within uh, the uh, the framework of the standard model, and so there exists method to calculate the secondary spectrum. What are these methods? These methods are uh, one semi-analytical method and uh, we employed two, uh, two different approaches here. And we use the toolkit of uh, Blackhawk, uh, which is a code in C, which allows to uh, track the evolution and uh, understand the, uh, and analyze the future of the emission of uh, a black hole. And uh, relies on the PPI and asthma uh, atomization table in two different uh, uh, ranges, which are here reported, and they are two fully numerical uh, methods on which we couldn't uh, uh, put our hands on because it's a ready-made code, and uh, uh, we didn't want to play with that, but we wanted to have control at least in one part, and it is possible to do it in this part with a semi-analytical calculation, uh, well reported in this piece of literature by Profumo et al. And uh, I'm going to describe basically what it is this semi analytical method and relies on the uh, convolution of the primary emitted and stable particle, which a fragment, which a final state radiation function, which is given by this formula, where this uh, function is the alta Rayleigh Parisi function. And in this way, it is possible to, calc to, to, to estimate the contribution of electrons, muons, and pions. And as you can see, uh, the secondary uh, component is a uh, uh, dominated by the, uh, the, the photons coming from the electrons. And uh, here are reported uh, uh, example of the total spectrum uh, for different mass black hole and different spin uh, from zero to uh, 0 0.5, uh, uh, the uh, spin parameter of the black hole in the three cases. And as you can see, they look different. And also for this reason, we didn't rely to use 
this tail part, but we wanted to use something in this area, which is shared. It's actually not shared because in the intermediate uh, regime here, there is this uh, bell, this bump, which is uh, emerging, and uh, this uh, ruin, uh, a peak valley structure, which you can see here, which is what we used. So as I said, we use this peak and valley structure when it's present, and it's provide um, good information about both the mass and the spin of this object. While here, it is not possible because of this bell, which is due to the ion decay. And as you can see, one here, what you're looking at is the uh, different masses, so different temperature, uh, black hole or no spin in this case. But you can see for a, a low temperature, when the pion is not emitted, there is not the presence of this bell. While once it's emitted, we have a, a, a bell centered in half the mass of the pi. And in this region, we had to uh, invent a new way to, uh, to estimate the, the mass and the spin, relaying by on the, this shoulder, which is a point in which the uh, force derivative of this emissivity is as a local maximum. And uh, we also fitted the tail here and find the intersection in order to evaluate this distance. So let's come to some result. If one considers the energy of the valley of uh, in, in this uh, low mass region and plots uh, uh, all the different uh, spin, uh, they superimpose to uh, a very, very good extent. And so just a measurement of the position of the valley is a measurement of the mass of the black hole. And once it is obtained, the mass of the black hole, it is possible to consider the ratio of the energy of the peak over the energy of the valley in order to estimate, as you can see, is, here is reported the, the, um, this uh, quantity for different spin. And uh, once the mass is known, it is possible to look where the ratio sits and to have an evaluation of the spin of the black hole. And the very same can be said uh, about the high mass region in which uh, the peak valley structure is present. Unfortunately, in the intermediate mass region, this structure is not present and the position of the shoulder is not such a good indicator, but still allows to put a lower and upper bound to the mass of the black hole in order then to move to a secondary uh, plot in which the ratio of the, uh, what we call the energy of the distance and energy of the shoulder is reported. And it is possible to uh, infer from here uh, at least uh, up to some uh, approximation, the spin of the, uh, the black hole. So why is it so interesting, uh, uh, to my perspective, this, uh, this idea? Because for sure, if uh, these objects uh, exist and uh, we are capable to measure them, the first measure will be uh, their electromagnetic radiation. And uh, uh, knowing the distance of this object may be a difficult task. And if it's not difficult, at least is putting uh, on the table more uh, source of error. So uh, to obtain the mass and the angular momentum for this object in a theoretical way allows ones also to uh, calculate their photon emission, the, the photon flux coming from this primordial black hole. And once uh, it's uh, confront, uh, compared with the experimental one, it is possible to have an indirect measurement of the distance. OK. Uh, all what I said is in, in this second part is in this uh, reference, uh, uh, which was put in the archive just last week. And um, let's come to the last topic. Uh, I wanted to, I asked myself, is it possible to also go in another direction, not only beyond the standard model of particle physics, but also beyond the vacuum solution of general relativity. So to consider something which uh, uh, is motivated by, uh, in this case, by the, the removal of uh, the singularity, uh, but some solution which are not vacuum solution of general relativity. And so uh, it, it is, and it's very easy to see that once we open this covariant derivative, the metric enters uh, in this uh, equation. And so if one considers a different uh, uh, metric, uh, one should have different uh, uh, evolution of the black hole. And, uh, uh, first, I look at the simpson visser metric, but it's not rotating. And I discovered that uh, there exists uh, an R1 study, this curve black bound solution, in which uh, a regularizing parameter appear. And this regularizing parameter, it's what cures the uh, singularity 
or uh, the presence of pressurizing. And this is the line element of this car black bounce. And what is this car black bounce? It's a solution that reduces to the car metric once the, uh, the parameter, the relative parameter is going to zero. Uh, while uh, once this, this uh, regularizing parameter grows, uh, it uh, cures the problem of the singularity because it's like uh, a wormhole which is growing inside a, a black hole. And so it's uh, uh, basically swallowing the, uh, the singularity, swallowing the Cauchy horizon if uh, uh, this regularizing parameter is higher than uh, the value of the Cauchy horizon, but smaller mm -hmm. than the uh, event horizon. While if this regularizing parameter is larger than the radius of the black hole, we have a wormhole solution. Uh, what are we interested in is a solution that maximally differs from a Kerr black hole, but still is a black hole. So we did consider uh, a almost saturated value of the regularizing parameter in the unit of the uh, event horizon distance. And uh, what we did is just uh, to resolve the uh, the spin, the massless spinless, the Klein Gordon massless uh, equation for this kind of geometry and obtaining the, uh, the equivalent of the uh, Tukolsky radial equation for this solution in order to obtain the gray body factor and uh, to calculate the evolution of a black hole in a toy model. Uh, so it will be a black hole just uh, evaporating with one uh, scalar field in order to see what are the differences between the Kerr solution and the Kerr black bound solution. One this is not a solution of the Einstein equation in vacuum. Okay. Maybe a solution with some uh, funk, oh, sorry, funky uh, matter. Uh, so, I mean, just taking the matter by the I don't, I, I held up that they, they satisfy the energy condition because there is a wormhole which is uh, created in the center. So at least uh, in the region where it's created, uh, I, 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 I guess that the no energy condition is violated. Yeah. Did I answer your question? So if one calculates the, the gray body factor, there is one which is uh, uh, actually the same as in the curb case, and is uh, uh, the L equal M equal zero mode, but all the other one are different. And uh, here is reported uh, an L equal M equal uh, one mode for a nearly extremal in the spin parameter of the black hole. And as you can see, we have uh, a Kerr solution, which is uh, the, uh, the blue one, while a Kerr black bounce is the red one. You could say it's not that different actually. And I can agree with you to the extent uh, that uh, the most uh, important part uh, is the, the low energy part because it's the one that is windows by these, uh, uh, is taken by this uh, uh, integral for the calculation of the depleting function. And as you can see here in the spheroidian regime where the uh, transmission coefficient uh, be, states uh, a stimulated emission, uh, the differences are quite uh, uh, remarkable. Uh, so, if one calculates this depleting function uh, and the confront, compare the curve solution and the curve black bounds here in blue and red respectively, some differences emerge. First of all, a difference in the uh, order of magnitude. This difference is due to the differences in the uh, surface gravity because of the presence of the uh, regularizing parameter, but also difference in shape, which is generally coming from the gray body factor. And this is true for the depleting function of the mass and of the spin. And in order to, to have a better look at this, one can consider this function H, which uh, uh, is a ratio is two is the ratio of G over F minus two, and is an important function for, for, to calculate the evolution of a black hole because this the root of this function are the asymptotic value of the spin parameter that a black hole which is evaporating only through a scalar field. Uh, would reach at the end of its lifetime. And as you can see, since it's a ratio, you can see the differences here uh, are quite remarkable, both in the asymptotic spin and in the way the black hole is reaching the asymptotic spin. So one can calculate both the mass and temperature, uh, the, the mass, the spin and temperature evolution in red 
green and blue here for a pair uh, solution, uh, the dotted line and a pair block bound solution, the solid line, starting with the same mass, first row and same temperature, second row. And as you can see, differences uh, are, uh, are big in, in the sense that there is a four order of magnitude differences in the lifetime of two black holes having the same natal mass and also the temperature at which the two black holes sits for the majority of their lifetime is quite different and the moment at which they reach the, uh, the asymptotic value of the spin parameter differs. And the same can be said if we consider uh, two black holes at the same temperature while formed, they need to have two different masses in order to have the same temperature and uh, they need to have two different lifetimes. And one could also consider uh, two black holes having the same lifetime in order to see uh, what is their mass or their temp and the temperature, and they are different. And it's also different the way uh, they gain uh, angular momentum throughout the evaporation of a singular uh, scalar field. So, oops. Was a question? No. Uh, it is possible to calculate uh, uh, the primary emissivity of a scalar particle with the uh, formula I showed you before. And uh, to calculate for two black holes, in this case, for different spin in blue, green, and red, starting from uh, 0, 0 0.9, and 0 0.99, the uh, ex extremal value of the spin parameter of the black hole. For a care solution in, do, in dotted line and for a care black bounce in uh, solid lines. And uh, uh, as you can see, the emissivity of uh, scalar particle have different uh, uh, orders of magnitude. And this is again stated by the differences in the um, surface gravity, uh, while the difference in shape uh, is uh, uh, coming again from the uh, gray body factors. Uh, uh, and as you can see, same temperature and same masses have two very different profiles. And so in a certain sense, why is it interesting this result to my perspective? Because the black hole structure cause a variation in the structure of the event horizon, which cause variation in the Bogolyubov uh, transformation, causing differences in the Hawking emission of these particles. So in a certain sense, it is possible not, not gain information coming from the inside of the uh, black hole, but uh, in a certain sense, to look inside without looking inside. And uh, all these results are in this piece of uh, reference presence on the archive. I'm really thankful for your attention and uh, I'm ready for your question if you have any. Thanks very much and very nice, very nice for keeping the time. Which questions do we have for our speakers? I, I have a curiosity more than a question about, I don't want to say the exact model that you need to produce black hole because I remember, I, I was doing this for my master's, so I don't remember much, but I remember that uh, for, the, for, for the string scenarios, mm -hmm. I think that the black holes that they have, I think they were heavier. The, the one, I mean, from uh, action, from explicit uh, inflationary scenarios, and the tensor to scalar ratio in order to have the reflection point generated. Now, with the latest uh, bicep results, it should be ruled out. But this is stuff from two years ago, and the results are from last year. So I don't know. If... Uh, you can tell me something about the specific. Uh, no, no, I just, uh, for me, it, it, it was just uh, once uh, the over density uh, is. Within uh, the the Hubble um, the Hubble radius, a black hole is formed. So, uh, depending on uh, in which uh, uh, at which time uh, this overdensity collapses inside this radius, uh, the black hole is formed. And uh, I, 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 no, I was saying because you were telling about the string uh, inspired different mm -hmm. scenarios. So, I mean, in that case, the inflation potential is like. Well, the term you have that, and that usually, but you don't have that much freedom as much as I remember. But 
Yeah, uh, please uh, to give me some references later. Okay, so okay, I, okay. I, I, I was not going to. Any questions? When did you see the start seeing the issue of non other public Like putting radiation to be for all the ones in the Why are you focused on the other? I'm not just focusing on reaction. I'm sorry if I didn't stress it out. I'm considering the old standard model particles plus the graviton plus a certain number of axioms. Mm -hmm. And I'm evolving the, uh, the black hole up to a point at which the temperature is uh, tested uh, in the CERN. And we know that the standard model of particle physics is, uh, is valid. I'm sorry if I was not clear in the first explanation. Maybe I can ask a very nice question. It's about when you, at the beginning, when you mentioned the charge of black holes. Mm -hmm. So do you understand correctly that the main reason why you only consider mass and spin is because any negative charge, spin or stuff, as so you say, evaporated? Like yes. It worked, the... before. The, the depletion of the charge of the black hole is orders of magnitude faster than uh, uh, its mass depletion and uh, uh, and also spin depletion. Also in the case of zero action, the, the charge of the black hole would be washed out in orders of magnitude uh, before uh, the spin is depleted. So that means that if we wanted to find a black hole which was charged, it would have to be a very young black hole. Yes, would be yes. Of course, not a primordial. Not a, not a primordial one. Yes. And of course, too. Uh, so, if you consider all the particles, which particles are more likely to be emitted? Like heavy particles or light particles? Starting from the massless degrees of freedom. Okay, the, the black hole at the beginning will have a certain mass, so a certain temperature, uh, and this temperature is just increasing while the mass is depleting. So. First, you emit a massless particle, which doesn't, doesn't require any threshold to be produced, let's say like this. While it's shrinking down, the temperature is raising. Once the mass uh, is uh, smaller than the temperature, we consider the black hole emitting this degrees of freedom as massless. Clearly, it's an approximation. It would be not like this. There will be a smooth transition between an emission of very uh, not relativistic uh, particle and then uh, relativistic, but we had to, to consider some approximation. So we started from the lightest to the heaviest. Uh, yes, throughout its lifetime, yes. It starts emitting neutrino before electrons, yes. Any other questions? Apparently not, then if there's no more questions, let's thank our speaker again. If you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. 